like they use surveys or okay. Right, right. So um, this is for the folks online. We've been talking about the SWOT analysis that I uh, shared on Monday. And uh, what I have received from the class is a request that we go through a SWOT analysis at some point. Uh, because there are questions about it, uh, I want you to be thinking about your agency first. And if you uh, want to even practice using a SWOT analysis based on what you have learned so far, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, threats, to help you and your key contact person sort of decide on a project or a focus for analysis that you would be looking at, analyzing, and then proposing perhaps a small change or a small improvement, something to build strength on strength, or in a couple of your cases, something to initiate a service project focus that hasn't been developed yet. So uh, I'm going to, I want you to take that knowledge, use it as you can, but if you have more questions, if you're online, let me know you have questions, feel uncertain about it. And then I want to look at some of the other aspects of assessing the community that are in chapter or chapter two, step two. And so as I turned on the mic, I believe it's on, uh, Leah, Leah, you had a question about interviewing and surveys and such, right? Yeah, that's how you do SWOT analysis, right, is by um, the, uh, what did I say? You said interviewing, <laughs> but, uh, I can sort of, your question was how, who do you include? What's the process? Yeah, okay. Perfect. So uh, how you do a SWOT analysis actually is to, ideally you're going to gather people together, a group of people together. You may have a focus group. You may have the team of people you're working with. So uh, ideally, with your agency, you call everybody together or maybe the core administrators or uh, maybe if, you know, I talked about in the case of Casey and, um, and Sherry, that you're coaches and you have a team. So a core group of people who can be your informants. Remembering whoever comprises that group of informants your analysis is going to be limited to their perspectives. But you want to limit it in some way because you want it to have a structure. You want it to be broad enough so you get the information you need. Because of the nature of how you are working with your agency, some of you will be limited. So, Diamond, you may be limited in including all the people in student life, you may have an opportunity at some point, and I wouldn't suggest it right now, to ask to include all those stakeholders who would be integral to developing the student leadership project. Because there are m more people than, than your supervisor, there are other people in student life would be a part of it. Um, and, but, is, that would be great if you can because you're going to get more out of it. And, but in the case of David, since you are working with the Public Defender's Office, you're going to have limited access to people and to informants. So uh, you might build that SWOT into when you have, are interviewing a new person and say, just build it in. What do you see as the strengths? What are some areas that you think could be improved? As far as working with the public, what do you perceive are opportunities? What's happening? Are, are there, is there anything happening? For instance, the promise of additional funding or a groundswell of the population who have heard about it and they are excited about it, so they're going to be supporters. Could be that you're working with, as we were talking about before, maybe the sheriff's office, maybe some attorneys, maybe probation parole folks. Maybe you'll have that support. It could be an opportunity. 
It also could be a threat if instead of the promise of additional funding, funding starts drying up, that uh, things have happened so that there is more defensiveness, less openness, more, less trust. And I don't know what's happening on the local level, uh, but, and I, but it's not what's happening nationally. What's happening nationally is a, a corroding of trust that was never all that strong. But right now is probably not the ideal time to develop a project that relies on a broad spectrum of trust. It's probably on a national level a, t a time to go in and listen and really hear and look for ways that can re rebuild trust. Uh, in any of those cases, you can use a SWOT analysis to get a sense of perspectives and where things are. As I look at that, I'm going to put it, I want you to be aware of it, use this you can. If you're ready to use it and you have a purpose for using it and you have questions, not sure, please let me know. That's part of my job is to be your coach and maybe even sometimes a cheerleader. I don't make the best cheerleader, but <laughs> well, visually maybe not. But, uh, but to help you through that process as you are ready and I want you to be considering that even now as we make plans. But as I looked at your submissions for uh, chapter two, I was reminded that even though it was structured, you were given the questions to ask, you were expected to interview. Is that true? And I've received about half of the submissions and uh, not everybody was able to conduct the interview. One of the things I found on the form that was lacking is that it doesn't ask what the source of your information is. So if you haven't turned it in yet, and you happen to remember, please type in just a little bit of information so I know the source of your information. It's always good to include the source of your information for whatever you do. Uh, not only for me, but for any class, and as you are out in the public as a professional, uh, you may find that there are those who are, don't normally give the source of information, but people appreciate knowing. And you come across as being more credible when you uh, cite your sources. For some reason, I missed that assignment, that assignment. How could I have done that? Which assignment was that? Chapter two of the SWAT. Okay, the, it's the assignment where you start with uh, Worksheet 1.5. It's worksheet 1.5, 2.1, 2.2. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that was due last night. As I said, I got about half of them, but the Dropbox is staying open till Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's when, that's when you changed that it was going to stay open. Yeah, until it's staying until Sunday yeah, yeah. because you need the time to gather that information. One point five, two point one, two point two. You'll also see that I have gone through and scored your agency of focus assignment from several weeks ago, and uh, and I have reopened that Dropbox because what I want you to do is take that first introduction to your agency and keep working with it, keep refining it. When you come to the end of your project, you're going to begin. You're going to be turning in a report, and the report is going to begin with an introduction of your agency. So take what you've already written as your first draft and keep diddling with it. And that's the first three worksheets? That, no, that's not the first three worksheets. It's before you got to the first three worksheets. It was your agency of focus, and you might not have gotten that turned in. Like I said, I couldn't figure out how to get. Okay. I mean, I, can, okay. I know how to drop something. The board. Dropbox was closed, so you can go back. It's now open again. It will be open until towards the end of October for you to be refining that. And that's the and agency intro? That's it's, a, um, it's called Agency of Focus. Remember um, the class when um, we stopped with the book and we stopped with the worksheets and we pushed the worksheets back to do it. Okay. Oh, went back to yeah. the whole yeah. book. Okay. Right. So that is scored with comments. Some of you, by the way, if you've got a score you really like, don't say, Psh, you're fine, because you're not fine. It still needs to be fined more for the, for the purpose of when you turn it in for, um, f as part of your report. Now, if you are happy with it now and don't change it, 
that your already good grade is not going to go lower. But when I come to the report, I'm still going to want a report that introduces that information in such a way that it brings the reader in that is part of um, a report format. So uh, keep working on that, even if you'd like your grade. Uh, but because of just to, the more you do now to get ready for the, in the end, it's going to be easier in the end. If you don't like your grade, keep working on it because I want you to get a better grade and it needs to be more inclusive. And if it was a low grade, it was because you still need uh, more information and you knew you needed more information. So uh, keep gathering that. And what you're going to find with most agencies, and I, I did that in the comments, in most agencies you're going to find that there are published mission statements, there are published vision statements. Uh, if there are not, you have this opportunity to talk and talk and talk. You'll be talking a lot. And before, hopefully by now, but before it's all over with, you're going to have a, a pretty good idea of what the vision is, even if they don't have a vision statement. Look again at, and the next chapter, chapter three, we're going to be looking at mission, vision, and uh, values, how well that is expressed. And if you're not sure at this point, when we get to chapter three, that'll give you an opportunity to look at it. I'm not asking that you take an established agency and change their mission or change their vision statement, but that you are able in describing it to, uh, to be able to reflect the um, sense of mission, a sense of vision in the process. So um, talking about like uh, mission statement, the vision and stuff like that, um, and this will apply to, the, you said you had two online other coaches that are doing their yeah. teams, obviously. Yes. And then I'm going to, that's my plan is to do Northern Wrestling. Okay. And um, that I mean, mission statement, I mean, they don't really have a mission, but. They have a focus, don't they? Yeah. They have a purpose. Yeah. They right. have a vision, even if it's, and you're so, going to help them, since you're coaching them anyway, you have an opportunity to say, you know, to ask them, ask coach to make sure it's okay. Hey, I'm, I'm doing this as a class assignment. You can help me. Who are we? And you can go through this, the process of having them define how they see themselves and it will help them as a team okay. to define that focus. So that's okay. why I think coach will be all for you doing that. Okay. And then you come back with what you hear and say, this is, this is what I heard. Is it right? And they can pick over it and choose it and, and make it theirs. You want them to make it theirs, okay. not yours. Okay. So your job is to hear them, give it back to them and say, is, is it, does this say what you want? Should I change any words? Where is, where is it? What have I left out? Wasn't, what isn't quite right? Okay. Yeah. So talk to them and then yeah. go through and create a mission statement. Yes, and then, and then let them edit it. Mm -hmm. And so by the time you get done and you're doing your report, they own a mission statement. Okay. They, they own a vision statement. Okay. And you can use that for the um, week one assignment within the introductions and the expectations. Great. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. see, we're beyond the introduction no, expectations. Know, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to revise it, like if you didn't get all the information. Oh, yes. Go back and use that. That's why I opened the drop boxes, so you can go back and revise it. And as soon as I get done scoring the uh, the chapter, Step one assignment, I'll open that up again. And I will do so also when I'm able to put it in a Word format. So those of you who hasn't, haven't already transcribed it to a Word format, you can take your first draft, do the revisions I suggested in a Word format so that after this point you can cut and paste. Okay. Because every step you do, everything I have you do, you are gathering information, you are gathering resources that first help you focus on what you're doing, help you decide on where you're going, but also that a lot of that information you will use as background information as you uh, develop your report of your, your assessment and final proposal. Is that helpful? Any questions? 
Okay. Which is 1.12 and 3, are those still open? Or? That's what I was just referring to. It's not open, but be, if you haven't turned it in, be working on it because I'm going to score them. I wanted to score them by today. So, and by the way, I'm, the next couple of weeks are going to be a little rough as far as my getting feedback to you. It's, we've got accreditation coming, I've got a presentation to make. And there I say, my husband's on his way too. Um, so I'm going to be a little distracted, but I, I'm still going to keep that focus to get that, uh, especially the first worksheets back to you as soon as possible, hopefully by Friday morning and uh, so that you can work on that. So at that point, both graded sections, the box is going to be back open for you to do revisions. Okay. And if you didn't get anything in, the revision is your initial submission. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to do the worksheets over because I tried to, I made an attempt to type it out like somewhat like he did, but I just didn't have no patience and it looks pretty crappy and pretty ashamed of it. Uh -huh. So now I did figure out how to um, access the worksheets. Okay. Yeah. So the new, the newly, the new ones that are in Word format, and I noticed that David actually has two submissions. Is, was it you that you have two submissions? One that where you just used the, you called it a crappy worksheet. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, the poor format, and then he went back and he cleaned up. I bet just because you wanted to feel better about it. Yeah. It kind of looks really nice when he cleaned it up. I have three submissions. Yes. Okay. But keep working on it so that it's what you want it to be. And unless you really ask me, I normally will look at the most recent one. I just wanted to see if there was more in the second one because you've done, you've, you've done it partially. You're partially there. And so, um, so keep working at them. Keep working at them. Keep to your deadlines. It makes a difference that you keep to your deadline. And I hold you to that because uh, my experience is, even though I have people revise and revise and revise, for instance, Scott doesn't mind my saying, he's behind the eight ball now and he's feeling a little panicky. He knows he can catch up, but it's just a really uncomfortable feeling, isn't it? I'm not, no. I'm not very happy about Yeah. That. So you don't want to be there. And also, you'll get more out of the discussion once you're caught up. Yes. Okay. So, notice that I have changed things yet again because I want to spend a little bit more time with interviewing and with surveys. So, for today, my plan was to spend some time looking at interviewing, and we'll do that on Monday too. There are skills to interviewing, and fortunately, with the kinds of questions you have to ask to Complete worksheet 2.1 is fairly well structured. But uh, my source of information, I have lots of things about interviewing, and it can get really tedious. And I feel that we are in a point where we need to keep it simple. You're, in, you're not doing graduate level research where you interview subjects over a course of time and you need to tape it. Uh, in fact, in most of your cases, even though they um, give you guidelines, to, if you're going to tape, what the kind of information you're gathering, you want it to be informal enough, I think, that you don't need to tape. Once you start taping, even what I'm doing here, you guys are really great, but I've seen people sort of freeze up when they go, oh no, they're going to capture my voice. And actually, I have felt that way at times too, especially if I didn't quite trust the situation. So, um, so you'll get probably a better develop better relationship, better comfort level, trust level, if you're able to ask the questions, jot a few notes, and then as soon as you're done, capture your impressions before they, your impressions take a walk somewhere. You know, while they're still fresh. Okay. So, interviewing. Source of my, inf my information, and I probably, you know, I haven't gotten to it yet. Of course, source of my information is, again, the community toolbox. I'll go ahead and open this up. 
Notice I go to the community toolbox, I go to learn a skill, table of contents. I could go to toolkits, but I'm going to go table of contents. I already know that I'm going to be in chapter three, assessing community needs and resources. This particular chapter, feel free to skim through it, get any kind of help you feel you, you can get from this particular section. It's on target with what you're doing. And I'm not going to, re I'm not going to assign all of it but what I'm saying is it's, it's chock full of information. I don't want you to be overwhelmed, but I want you to get the resources that will be helpful to you. If you're not sure and... You don't want to be overwhelmed? <laughs> if it means, if it means... <laughs> I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I don't want you to freeze up not knowing where to go, afraid to do the wrong thing. I don't want that. If feeling uncomfortable, brings you to a course of action, that's a good thing. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. This is a 300 <laughs> level class. This is an important, these are important skills, aren't they? Yeah. If you are going to be working for a community agency, these are skills that you are going to be expected to have if you are in a position of responsibility for an agency. That's why we have this course. So, Now, I know some people in this class are minoring in this, but if you're going to be working with any nonprofit and you want to encourage some growth, this, will, uh, this process will allow you to take the action you need to take in order to get the tools you need to write grants, to convince external sources that you know what you're doing and also to to help those internally strengthen your program. So in section 12 I'm just going to skim over this. It's what is an interview? Why should you conduct an interview? When interviews are not the best option? The problem with interviews? Whom should you interview? Notice they use correct grammar there. Whom shall you interview? Uh, how should you conduct the interview and the structure? And there's a PowerPoint. I will show it, but I'm not quite sure how strong it is because it just has bullet points. Anyway, I'm trusting. You tell me, what is an interview? Oh, I see. Okay. Got it twice. So those of you online, if you want to go to Community Toolbox, Chapter 3, I'm at Step 12 and at their PowerPoint. However, I am going to be relying on the data. As you will see, if you go look at it, the PowerPoint is limited. It just provides an overview structure. The section that says what is an interview is going to be the most helpful to you. So conducting an interview, they say it's a conversation with a purpose. And the reason I am showing that is I want to emphasize the fact that if you choose, when you choose, not if, when you choose to do an interview, you know what your purpose is. And hopefully it's also to really hear the other person that you don't have an agenda to convince somebody of something. People, when being interviewed or surveyed, if they sense that you're trying to prove something, they either will choose not to be a part of it, or they will tell you what they think you want to know. Or leave information out. Or, and they will leave information out. People will leave information out, if, especially if they think that it's not part of what you want to know, or if they want to defend and, and sort of shelter a situation that they think might, if they divulge, it might be harmful to someone. Someone they either care about or some group they either care about or that they are afraid of. So, so with the interview, you are just focus on what your purpose is. If you have a bias that you're not able to shake, let them know about it ahead of time. You say, I'm working with this, and I want you to know I'm already working with Mary, and we really care about 
the program. But we also really want to hear your perspective as well. So, and an example of that is in my talks with Bonnie Satchitello. Um, when I t share with her what you're telling me, she really wants to hear what your impressions are. She wants to hear the good and she wants to hear the stuff that would, that would show that you have concerns or you have questions. She really wants to hear that. And if you trust that, she's putting that out right there, hopefully making you feel safe to give perspective. When is an uh, interview not a good option? Well, you can't interview 100,000 people. I'm not expecting you to interview in this class, given your time. That's part of what you're looking at is, what are my resources? What are the expectations? How much time do I have? How much information can I reasonably expect to get? And will I, do I need a broad overview of perspectives? Do I need the breadth but not the depth? In which case the survey is probably your option, or do I need to go in depth to get a real sense of this person's perspective on the issue I've already identified that I want to know about? And so an interview with the director of your program is really a good idea. But doing an in-depth interview with every administrator on campus may not be. You know, it does, it's going beyond the scope of your assignment. If you had a year and it, you were working on a doctoral thesis or something and it had to do with the same project, maybe interviewing every internal stakeholder you could identify would be a very good idea. Okay? If you need numeric data, what you're going to get are impressions. Leah said, but I want some numeric data. I need more of that information. So she went out and got a copy of the grant. And you were able to walk out with it, right? Yeah, I was kind of scared to ask for it, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and more and more, since grants are available in electronic form, more and more groups are willing to share that. And it saves time, you know, I don't have to keep yeah. calling her. And, yeah, so. you still want to have the conversations, yeah. but then her time is precious, and in every one of your cases, if you're not the person directing it, getting the ear of the person who is, who is very busy, it's precious time, right, Diamond? You don't get to talk to Steve every day, do you? And so you schedule the time, and you, you, the purpose is clear, and you're expected to be prepared and on task when you have a time with, with your supervisor, and this is his co-op we're talking about. And that's part of what you're learning, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, but if you need numeric data, get the documents. You can ask for them in the interview. You can ask for them elsewise. But the interview itself is not about numeric data. It's not about, um, it's, it's not about also, hmm, it's about getting depth, Beth, Beth, uh, depth of insight. So the numeric data, it says, you don't want to interview if there are too many traps. What do you think they mean by that? That you could put people in an uncomfortable position if they, if they don't mm -hmm. want to give you the information you might be looking for because they're afraid it's going to make them look bad or make somebody look bad. Yeah. Yep. So if there's not a trust level, if people are insecure, or if the information that you potentially would get could be harmful to that person, think twice about an interview. Okay. Also, you don't want to force someone who doesn't want to talk to you. And you can think about the times that you have seen where people were put in a situation where they had to be interviewed, they didn't want to be interviewed, and the information that comes out is not going to be the kind of information that you're seeking. Oh, you're going to get yes, no answers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
And that's part of it, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about with the interviews. We won't get it to it today because we're just starting this discussion. But what happens with what you're, when you're just getting yes, no situ answers? Uh, in years past when I taught this course and I had students individually go out and interview different people in the community without the proper training, <clears throat> me not give proper training what do you mean but uh, not without the proper training some came back with a great deal of data comments uh, stories that went with supporting what they were saying spent an hour in what was supposed to be a 15-minute interview some of which might not have been focused uh, and other people came back with a very spent five minutes in what should have been a 15-minute interview and got yes no answers in both cases, uh, you need to ask, did I, did I achieve my goal? Did I really get the understanding? Because you're looking within an interview, you're, you're get, trying to get that people side to you, trying to get some understanding and perspective and depth of, of, uh, of depth of knowledge of that interviewee and of the topic itself. So, uh, so you don't want to do it on those situations. Disguide, decide carefully whom it is that you will be interviewing. And I, as I said, I recommend that in the very least you're going to be interviewing the people at, who are at the helm. If you can have, you have access to them. Uh, as far as people who can really give you in, who are already invested and committed to the organization, the agency that uh, that you are, that you have chosen, they understand it in and out, and they probably really want you to know and understand it on an in-depth level. And that's usually the director. Okay. So, but decide carefully. If you had a more in-depth project, I would have you probably interview the four or five key people in your organization. I'm going to try to do that just because there is only five of them. Uh, okay. So you're in a position to actually sit down with each and individual. I think I can gain access to them and okay. not, you know, not impede on their time too much. And I'm going to have to be really precise in what questions I ask. You need to plan your questions out. So you not only decide carefully who it is that you will be interviewing, you're going to be deciding carefully. You know, what is your purpose? What are you seeking? How can you ask those? What kind of questions will help you get the understanding you want? Fortunately, your textbook has these worksheets that has the kind of questions that help you think more broadly so that hopefully you don't get finished with the interview that you have planned carefully, uh, thought about, shared with others to make sure that you included everything and then you get finished with the interview and say, I wish I'd asked that. Okay. Interviews can be face to face, it can be on telephone, and it can also be with focus groups. I may be wrong, but I don't anticipate any of you are going to do a focus group. But what do we mean by a focus group? Probably like all the people that are involved in the program. Okay, so you bring all the key stakeholders together and you sit in a circle or in a situation where an environment where it's, it's a comfortable shared environment and you can ask some questions and what, in a focus group, one person responding, another person is going to respond to the first person's response, it takes a little bit of extra skill to stay on topic, but you can measure initial response, subsequent response, and see where it builds. Now, well, they do feed off of each other. So if someone goes off in this direction and they all sort of say, yes, that's important, you might not cover all the topics because they're all focusing on one area of topic. That's why it takes a, a, special, a special skill to um, keep the focus and yet keep the discussion going too. And it has to do with knowing when to move on, knowing when to ask the deeper questions, and making sure that everybody also has an opportunity to give feedback. But face-to-face -face and telephone, 
when would it be appropriate to choose a telephone interview over face-to-face? -face? Distance. Distance. Geographical. Yeah. If you're planning to talk to somebody in Helena, unless you're going to Helena, it's probably a good idea to do a telephone interview. With the intro class, I've got people who have chosen to look at communities that are not in Haver. They're going to be calling. Thank goodness with cell phones. You're laughing, but you know, if somebody had asked me to do that when I was an undergraduate, I would have felt very uncomfortable because there were no cell phones and long distance was at least a dollar a minute. And I would have, and I was on the kind of budget most of you are on going to college. So thank goodness we have that ability to call and get information from a distance. Face to face is good. And it has the advantage of being able to read people's facial expressions, being able to respond to the, to the environment. What's another reason, though, that you might go to a telephone besides distance? Time. Time. I can call up someone and say, do you have a few minutes we'd like to share with you? Uh, if now is not a good time, can we schedule some time? In fact, that's what I just did with Bonnie. And I asked her if she could meet with the class this Friday. Well, she's going to be, she can come out and talk to you for a few minutes, but she's going to be in a conference in Seattle. And she would be excusing herself from a session in order to come out and talk to you. She said, be a lot better on the 7th. So that's what we're going to do besides on the 7th. It's probably going to be better anyway, because it's at that point we want to choose our project to work with her. So telephone versus face-to-face. -face. And did I? Um, so, well, if you look at your, your worksheet for 2.1, you actually do have to do an interview in order to get that. It, you might not call it an interview. You might be saying, okay, I got some questions. Do you mind sharing it? It's not quite as formal, but you will be doing interviews as you go through. And that's why I chose to go ahead and, and talk about it today. Tips. This comes from the Community Toolbox website. Uh, OK, and I just realized what time it is, so I'm not going to go into it very much. <laughs> but there are tips for conducting the interview, and that's where I'm going to pick up uh, on Monday next week. On Friday, though, come prepared to analyze the Hopa Mountain. Okay. Yeah. So. On Monday, we'll, we'll pick up as far as the interviews and format and have questions. We'll build on that. And then as you can see from what I put on the board earlier, uh, as you do so, I want to be monitoring and helping you with your interviews. But then after that, we'll be talking about when and how to, to conduct a survey and all the many different kinds of surveys that are available for you to choose from. Sound good? Okay, so I will see you on Friday.